Hi everyone, welcome back to workshop and straight off the bat it's rather windy outside so you might hear that and also I've got a power supply running in the background charging a whole load of PDVS2 minis so you may hear the fan on that one as well. But anyway I've got a couple of pieces of test equipment here. I'm going to repair one of them today. It's going to be the Agilent 34405A 5.5 digit multimeter and I'll save the Agilent power supply for another day. I picked these up from the same supplier. Um, they've been through a repair facility as far as I'm aware so that usually means there's probably a hard to fix problem with them. I don't expect it's going to be very easy to fix these two. Um, hopefully it's not the VFDs or the displays uh, otherwise there's not much you can do with them apart from buy a new one but anyway I'm jumping ahead let's get the multimeter set up on the workbench and open it up and let's take a look. So here's the 34405A Agilent 5.5 digit multimeter. It's in really good condition to tell you the truth. There's no dings and no bangs on it. Everything's intact. It's around at the back there as well. It's got a it's got a seal on it, but I think everything I get from this company uh, I've got the same type of seal on it, so it's probably their own. I think the first thing I'll do is before I do anything is reset the line selector. It's currently set for 220 volts. So let's take that out and turn it round and get it set for 240 before I do anything. Okay. There we go. And I'll have a quick look at the fuse whilst we're in here. And the fuse looks to be intact. And the way these line selectors work is you just pull out the grey part here and you can see that it's got the different voltages on it and you just turn it round to the voltage you require so I'll turn it round to 240 so that's it set for 240 volt there and basically this contact here then goes into the the receptacle down in the unit and makes contact for the 240 volt tap on the transformer. So the first thing I'm going to do is take off the rubbers, take off the tilt and bail, open it up and let's have a look inside and see if there's any visible obvious damage. One thing I've noticed on the side of the unit, there's this uh, Chinese characters or Taiwanese characters or something and a friend translated that for me and it says tooling so what that's meant to mean I'll never know but anyway let's carry on so let's take a look inside well looks pretty clean inside to tell you the truth um, we've got the main board here with the display board uh, underneath there uh, we've got transformer here, we've got the IEC mains input here, you can see all those wires down here, that's from the voltage selector that I changed to just earlier on, and you've got a little bit of a, you've got a power supply board here, and a USB interface board which is uh, at the back there. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is put my meter on the IEC input, and uh, let's see if we're getting a primary on the transformer. Right, put the power, power switch is on, and let's go across the IEC at the back. And we're getting 226 ohms, that sounds about right, just make sure the switch does operate correctly. Yep, back on again. So let's make sure there's no short circuits from the primary to earth. That's fine, live and neutral, and this is the earth connection there, that should be shorted, 0.2 of an ohm, that's fine. There's nothing visibly damaged, there's no bulging in any of the caps that I can see on the power supply board, there's no bulging on any of the caps or anything like that, no visible indication of anything untoward. So it's looking like I can go and put power into it and let's see if it actually powers up. Right, let's get some mains into it. Let's 
Well, it powered up. Well, we've got a nice display, so my earlier thoughts that probably there might have been a problem with the VFD has come to nothing because I'm certainly getting a, a nice display. Let's see, we're on millivolts DC, DC current. You can hear the relays inside switching as I change modes. Wow, so far so good. So let's get some uh, test leads into it and check out the various ranges. Okay, I think we'll go for DC voltage first of all. So I've got the PDVS2 Mini ready. Uh, it's been on for a couple of minutes, so it should be getting close to stabilising. So that's zero volts. Uh, let's go all the way up to 10 volts. Okay, 10 volts going into it now. I'm on the 100 millivolt range, so let's go up. That's one volt range. There we go, 10 volt. Wow! Try auto range mode. That's working. Let's go down to one volt. <laughs> That's spot on. I thought this unit was meant to be faulty. Uh, yeah, there could be anything wrong with it yet. Uh, we've got the other ranges to check out, but uh, certainly DC voltage range is working. Now, the fuse on the input here for the current input, it's a um, bit chewed up there. So it looks like somebody's been in and out there on the current range, so I wonder if that's a problem. Okay, I think the next thing to do is I'll get this unplugged. Of course, stability is another thing, but uh, let's just check and see if it's all working, first of all. Zero ohms if I short out my leads. That's not too bad. 0.2 of an ohm for these here. Try and null it out. And it nulls out, so let's get some... Uh, test resistors in and see what we're getting on the readout. Now what I do have is a little box I'd made some time ago with some precision resistors inside it. See the spec on the side there, some Vichy resistors there. And I've got 100 ohm, 1k, 10k and 100k there. So we'll just try all um, four of them. There are four wire as well so I can test that mode as well but we'll just go for two wire. I think this unit here only supports two wire anyway, so let's get this hooked up and see what happens. So, just use the test leads here. So here is 100 ohm. 99.97, that's okay. 1k. Yep, 0.9999, that's fine. 10k. 9.999, that's fine, and 100k, 99.99. It looks like resistance mode's working as well on this unit. Wow. Okay. So let me just switch it off the time being, and let's check out this uh, fuse in here. Hooked up my multimeter here just to check out the fuse. Aha. Uh -huh. This this front panel fuse is blown. It's supposed to be a 1.25 amp fuse and it's blown. Right, so I'll replace it with something, I don't have this exact type of fuse but uh, I'm sure I'll have something that can do the job. I'll put that in and we'll check out the current mode on the uh, multimeter. Well this is the closest I've got, just a normal one amp fuse, it is a, an anti-surge fuse. Um, yep, yeah, one amp, so we'll try that. Uh, 
And let me go and hook up the meter and see if we're getting current input working. Okay, so what I've got, I've got a bench power supply off camera at the moment and the positive output of that's coming down into my uh, 121 GW and uh, also set to current mode and then the output of that is going into the input of the 34405A and then the negative side, the low side of this multimeter then goes back to the power supply and I've got the power supply set to constant current mode so I can dial up any current reading that I want. So let me just plug that in, I've got it set real low at the moment uh, about 50 milliamps or so and you can see I'm getting 59 milliamps there uh, on its auto range to the 100 milliamp range and I'm getting 59 on the 121 GW as well. So let me just uh, turn that up Go up to 363, that's working. Is that a blown fuse? Is that what was wrong with it? Let's keep going up here. 455, perfect. So let's check the 12 amp range, so 1.004. If I unplug that there and go in here. 1.005 on the 10 amp range and you heard it beep there as it switched to the 10 amp input or the 12 amp input and that's working as well I think this multimeter there's nothing wrong with it apart from a blown fuse so for the moment I've put the case back on and I'm going to test out some of the other modes on the multimeter I think the first one I'll go for is this the capacitance test here so I'll just hook up a capacitor, I've got the input leads already ready and I'll just pick a capacitor here out of my box I think it's 470 microfarad so let's just see what we get there Five, two, one. a little bit high but that's probably the capacitor so I'll just choose some other ones and see what happens this one's 100 microfarad. Yeah, 95.4. So yes, given the tolerance of these old capacitors, some of them are old, some of them are new. Okay, I've got my function generator hooked up off camera. This is it here, and I've set it for square wave, um, 1 kilohertz, 50% duty cycle. Yes. <laughs> 999 hertz so perfect frequency modes working great okay so next thing to test is a temperature input here now this multimeter doesn't use PT100 type temperature probes um, it uses the 5k NTC type which I don't have however what I can do is put a 5k resistor across the input here and I should get something approximating the current temperature uh, in the workshop given the tolerance of the resistors of course so let me just put in a couple of test leads here and I've got two 10k resistors in parallel to give me my 5k and if I just go across the probes now and hit temperature 25.2 degrees C and just to prove it's working I'll just disconnect it yep there we go and it goes under scale back on to 25.1 and now I should be able to change that value I've got another resistor here a 220k resistor a lot bigger than the 5k. If I just put it in parallel across the 5k I'll vary the resistance slightly and it should change the display. Yeah 25.7 take it off again 25.2 temperature inputs working. Now I haven't actually gone ahead and tested out the AC current mode I uh, can do that at a later date but I've got no doubt that's working as well but what I would like to test is the Skippy connection that's the USB connection on the back for remote 
operation. I've plugged in a USB cable into the back of the unit there and as you can see I've got a remote coming up on the display there. So let me just uh, configure the PC software and let me see if the Skippy is working on the meter. Okay and as you can see I've got the Keysight Connection Expert software hooked up and if I just um, scan down as soon as I plugged in the multimeter you can see that it uh, registered itself onto the software there so I should be able to send it some commands. Okay very easy to use you just um, start up the interactive IO uh, program within the suite and it's defaulting to send in the IDN command so if I just hit send and read you can see it connects to the multimeter and it reports back it's a 34405A etc and the serial number etc so Skippy's working. Well the final check other than the AC current uh, input check is just a stability check so I've hooked up my PDVS2 mini set it to 1 volt uh, DC V mode and it's been running for about an hour and it's perfect so <laughs> there you go I think there's nothing wrong with this meter other than a blown fuse on the low current input so there we go thanks for watching